Hi guys, how you doing? Uh, been a little while since I've done a video, so it's about time I, I did one. Just hoping the dogs behave. So today's little video is about why looking at the good things in your life is vital for battling anxiety. And um, it sounds cheesy, I know. It sounds like a, a Russell Brand sort of fridge magnet. But I'm going to give you some evidence. Um, and it's evidence that you can go and research for yourself if you so wish of to why it's so important to look at the good things that are happening right now under your nose. Um, so let me give you an example. Um, we, we've just come back from the south of France. Um, I've been on the beach, star fishing, um, facing the sun, sun on my face, absolutely beautiful. About eight o'clock at night, just as the sun was going down, I was in heaven. And on the way back, the person that I travelled with, um, and those that know me know who I travelled with, um, was on the phone to a friend. And this was the conversation. Oh, the flight was a nightmare. Oh, Stansted Airport was just horrendous. Trying to get to the car was absolutely awful. And I'm thinking, holy Christ, we've just come from the most beautiful part of the world on golden sands, eating the most amazing food, drinking the most amazing wine. And the narrative of the person I was traveling with was that everything was horrendous. Now, our brains need to feel safe. That's, that's, that's basically it. Our brains need to feel safe to thrive. And the message we send to that brain is like a program. And if we send the wrong program to that brain, then that brain will pick that up and it will accept it. Our brain is very uh, susceptible, whatever that word is, to change. So if you watch a horror film, for example, you feel horrified. If you watch a sad movie or have a sad thought, you feel upset. If you watch something funny, you will laugh. You can change how your mind thinks by what it, what it, what it takes in. So what you're thinking, um, your memory creates um, an emotion that, that creates a physical response. So by noticing the good things in your life, it's not just a happy thing to do. From a neurological level, this is how it helps you. So I don't know if you've ever kept a um, fish tank, a salt water fish tank. Don't suppose you have, but just take it from me. In there, this, in my in my one, I've got some soft corals that the puffer fish hasn't eaten. And... They are, I can only call them engorged. They're big, they're large, they're, 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 they feel good and they're, they're going out in their surroundings looking for food um, and they look really healthy. Yesterday, when I went in to clean the tank, I brushed past those, those corals, those soft corals, and they reduced within themselves. They shrunk, they went back inside themselves. They obviously didn't feel safe. And so they reverted back into themselves to feel safe. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, your brain is pretty much exactly the same. In your brain, you have millions of neurons that are searching out for connections. They are reaching out like those soft corals for connections. They want to pass on the information to the next neuron about what's going on. And really, that's brain plasticity. It's about one neuron talking to another, then talking to another and talking to another. That's what brain plasticity is. Um, absolutely 101% on board with brain plasticity. Obviously, I've seen it with my dad and going from a horrendous coma and injury to, you know, we pretty much got him back. He, 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 he got himself back in incredible, incredible um, journey his brain went on. And it absolutely remapped itself. And they call it neurogenesis, where, where new neurons are created. And then neuroplasticity, where new neurons go off in search for connections with other neurons. Now... If you tell yourself tell that your life is crap and everything is crap, you are sending a direct program to your brain that there's trouble ahead. And those neurons that stretch out start coming back and start, you know, start reducing into themselves. They call it pairing off. They sort of a bit like going out into the garden and pairing off your roses or whatever. It pairs off. It, it shrinks back. In some circumstances, it dies. Um, so now your work, your neurons aren't communicating. So all the best options available to you aren't there anymore. And that's why, you know, if you're ever involved in an argument, we are, our neurons pair back. Uh, it can't connect to the other neurons. So we become like those chimpanzees, very angry, very frustrated. We can't find the options available to us. And really, that's what panic attacks are about. Panic attacks are about, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I would cope. 
And it's because those neurons aren't communicating with each other. They're not passing on the messages. So the more you focus on the little good things that are happening in your day, and believe you me, there's, there's thousands of them in a day, happening right under your nose right now that is good about your life. Remember what you focus on, you amplify. And if you focus on your problems, they will amplify and you'll send a stronger message to your neurons that don't go out, don't go out looking for more neurons. It's not a safe place out there. But if you send your, a message to your brain that this is good, this is good. Oh, I'm so lucky to have that. They're so lucky to have me. I'm going to do such a great job today. You are telling your brain you're safe. And then those neurons, just like every other living organism, will go out there and, and look to pair up with another one to pass on that information through synapses. So I hope that makes some kind of sense. Um, so when someone says, you know, look at your language you're using to yourself. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not clever enough. I can't do that. You are sending a clear message to your brain and, you know, all those things will come true because you are sending that program to your brain. So just be kind to yourself. Remember the language you're using to yourself. And if from this moment on, because change takes time, right? Our brains are quite lazy. They like to do what they did yesterday because we did that yesterday. So we just do it again. So change does take a little while sometimes. Um, but I want you to think of your language. And next time you speak to someone, I want you to think about what you're saying. What message are you sending to your brain? And if it's one that's negative, then you've got an opportunity. It's a junction in the road to go, no, no, I'm not going with that negative uh, message. I'm going to upgrade my language. I'm going to use something that's kinder to my brain. Your brain will then feel safe. And then one neuron will connect to another and you're becoming more intelligent. You're getting the You've just multiplied your brain power. And again, and again, and again, and again. I hope that's made some sense. Have a great day. Enjoy this sun and um, speak to you soon. Take care, guys.